material energy, and the material energy is controlled ultimately by Krishna, Maya Dakshina Prakriti. So, so devotees don't worry about what's happening on the material level. They know if they get sick, well, I'm not sick, my body's sick. Still, I have to take care of my body and keep it from getting, you know, run down so I can do my service very nicely. But even if a devotee is somewhat sick and even debilitated, they can still engage in devotional service. They may have to change the way they serve, but as Prabhupada says, there's no material situation that can impede one's devotional progress. One may have to adopt a different type or a more subtle type of devotional. In other words, may, may one may be forced to just chant or read and can't do physical work because of debilitation of the body. But still, devotees are never affected by the combinations or the change of material energy. Although sometimes we seem like we are. Therefore, we shouldn't worry about the changing things, of what happens on the external energy. Things will always change. And you can't control that. You can control it up to a sense that you can be free from the effects of it by staying engaged in devotional service. And you can watch it happening in front of you. <laughs> but if you somehow or other try to control it or stop it to work, it's just not within our power. It's just the way the material energy works. It's not, we're not the controllers. We're simply the, the servants of the Lord who use the material energy and bring it back to its natural state. Because these elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and ego, are actually spiritual. Jai Sisi Panchatattva. Because Krishna creates these elements, and Krishna, everything Krishna creates is not material. It's of his same, what we say, nature. So these elements in their pure form in the very beginning of creation are actually spiritual. But when they are combined together and used in a way that is different from the service of the Lord, they take on this conception of being material. <laughs> but that's just another, as it says, it's, as it says here, liberation and bondage is just an illusion. It's false. <laughs> Because the soul can never be encumbered by the, the material energy, although it appears to be. And encumbering is simply the consciousness of the living entity. Change your consciousness, and you change your conception of your relationship with the material energy. When you get completely into pure consciousness, then you realize the material energy is completely separate from you. It has nothing to do with you. Just like if you get, well, I use the example, you get sick. And just like sometimes, well, even if you die, you don't really die. <laughs> because you never were, uh, well, you, you were, the body is never alive anyway. This is a combination of matter. <clears throat> and great souls, they know that if they have to leave their body, it's not a problem for them because they know they're not this body. And they know, they know that the bottom is just, a, just an ele material elements. So when they go to the stage of what they say, birth and death, it's simply a terminology of the beginning and the end of the body, which has nothing to do with the soul. And that's, we, we call it birth and death, but, and we call it in between that, that's life. But actually it's not life because there's no life to matter. Matter is simply jada or dead. So when you know all of these things, you, you, you don't have to worry about what's happening. You simply engage in devotional service. Yeah, my body is like this. All right, I'll work with it. Go on in your devotional service. We shouldn't be spending so much trying, trying to make our body comfortable or put it into a nice situation so we can somehow or other feel less difficulties of being in the material. And it's just, just engage in devotional service. We take some care, but just like you take care of your car, we know the car is not, you know, you. <laughs> but it has a purpose, so we take care of the body. But don't overdo it. Because it mentions that, and this is in Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the first, I think it's the first or second chapter of Adi Lila, 
there are 22 ways by which one can engage in sense gratification. And one of them is health. When we get too much absorbed in trying to make our body healthy, it's another form of sense gratification. When one should do what is necessary and not become overly concerned about that. Because ultimately, as Srila Prabhupada said, if you're sick, chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> And you'll see, as when you actually are sick and you chant, and you're chanting properly, you actually feel yourself being relieved of the effects of the disease, to some degree, depends on the, the type of disease you have. So actually, because the soul is actually becoming energized through the process of chanting, and when it does, it affects the body in a positive way also. So that the best health remedy is chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> of course, we take a few medicines every day, we take a few supplements. But when we get overly concerned about the, the state of the body, then we fall into this conception. Of, and it becomes, it becomes an obsession. There are people who are what we call a hypochondriacs. <laughs> They're always thinking about, oh, well, I'm going to get sick, and they, they take all kinds of medicines. You open up their door of their house, and all the medicines fall out on the floor. You know, it's like <laughs> there are people like that. It's just like too much, and devotees can get like that too. It's, it's this hell, that hell. Do do what's necessary, and of course, for one person, maybe one one level, another person. But when we get too much involved in that, then we fall into the bodily conception of life. Like that. So that's pointed out in Chaitanya Charitarita that health prevented, health activities also is a form of sense gratification when it is, you know, overdone. In other words, in a, I'm making that point because one of the most important parts of our material life is to take care of our health. But we have to make sure we take care of our spiritual health along with it in the, in the position of priority. So that's very important to understand. Because ultimately, you're going to die anyway. So how much time do you want to spend about trying to keep the body healthy anyway? It's all lost. The body's going to be gone anyway. So you keep it as healthy as you kind of can. But not all day thinking about this remedy, that remedy, this exercise, that exercise, this, this thing. And, uh, they're, 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 I mean, there's just people who are like, even there's, I know devotees are like that too. So you know, it's like too much. It's necessary, but it's not what we say a feature of you know, a overly concerned. Our main concern is: our, our, Am I engaged in devotional service this minute? What am I doing this particular minute? Is my mind focused on activities of spiritual life and devotional service, or am I thinking, you know? on the material level about the body or the extensions of the body or the act, you know. So a devotee should always be checking what is my consciousness. If you see yourself <clears throat> not able to do anything, chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> That's all. And then you're right back on the spiritual platform. <clears throat> and then this idea of liberation, as it says here, I mean, this is a very, very and what we say, how does it say, D different approach to the whole understanding of liberation. Because we hear that one should try to achieve liberation, but here it says it's another form of ignorance. That's all. So this takes it to another level of understanding. Okay, so I'll stop there and see if there's any questions, comments, criticisms. <laughs> Marge, yeah. Huh? Wait for the mic. Yeah. Here comes my. Here comes Michael. We call him Mike. <laughs> the uh, the idea of liberation being ignorance is not so much that we're not in ignorance. We are in ignorance. But liberation being ignorance is the fact that even if you're liberated, as you quoted that verse, 
you're still in ignorance because actual knowledge, all, to find out what you're not doesn't mean you know who you are. Right. So if you don't know who you are, then you're still in ignorance. Yeah. So, so the idea of, because although it says in Bhagavad Gita, Anaditva nigunatva paramatmayam avyam sharira stopi kontiya nakaroti nanalibyate. Those who can see with the eyes of eternity can see that the soul is transcendental, eternal, and beyond the modes of material nature. It's in spite of contact with the material body or Arjuna, the soul is neither doing anything nor is he entangled. Yeah. <clears throat> but we are in ignorance. <laughs> in other words, because we think we're doing things and we think we're entangled. Therefore, the influence of the illusory energy is upon us. Yeah, and, li- to, and to actual everybody. liberation, as Prabhupada writes in 1855s, liberation actually means... Devotional service. Uh, freedom from misconceptions. Yeah, that's one, element, one definition. But the liberation means to be engaged in devotional service. You're ready. Well, that means that you're, by devo- engaging in devotional service... You're you're on the liberated, liberated platform. platform. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so we don't have to worry about liberation. <laughs> it's, it's, it comes automatically. Yeah. Okay, anyone else? Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes, Prabhu. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj, for the lecture. Um, I would like to understand more um, when you said, for example, um, he's not the father and he's, she's not the lady, that's an illusion. It's a role we play in this world. Yes, okay. That, that's it's a drama. Right. Okay, <laughs> but how is that illusion? Is it uh, like it's just not, it's based temporary? On, it's based on the body. <laughs> You're only, if, if yes. you were in a female body, you would be a mother. But either female body or male body is part of the material energy. So, and the Lord Brahma will make this point later on in this chapter. He'll say all of the conce- all of the identities we have in this world are simply because we have a material body. And therefore, the idea of having a material body, as explains in the in the by Brashabdev, is just we take that on because of our desire to enjoy in this material world. But that's not us, we're not the material body. And so all of these things that surround our material body as far as our responsibilities in this world is based on this, this conception of having a material body. So we, we, we were in this drama, it has nothing to do with us. We play this role because we're in this, this drama of material existence, that's all. So at that moment, it's not uh, an illusion. I mean, it, you do your duty according to your ashram. So if you're in a grihasta ashram, you play the role as the father. But you have to understand, you're playing a role. It's not you. <laughs> that's all. Okay, yeah. I want to, yeah. That's what I want to yeah, say. Yeah. Play the role good, but don't get caught up in the role. <laughs> it will not. It will not last very long. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you're on the. If you're. If you're on. I mean, the best actors are actually those who identify with the part. <laughs> so, identifying with the part <laughs> in this world means getting more entangled with that illusion of being that part. <laughs> so, Prabhupada says, you, you, you know, my body, my wife, my children, it, this is all maya, because these persons who we claim connected to our body in these different ways are actually spiritual beings and they they are a part and parcel of Krishna. But as a grihasta, okay, you take care of your family. But you take your care of your family in such a way as they become Krishna conscious. As as uh, Rishabde says in the fifth canto, don't become father, don't become mother, don't become guru, don't become teacher. If you cannot liberate your you know, followers, children, from the cycle of birth and death, that's your main duty. Taking care of them on the material platform is also needed, but the main duty is to bring them to the platform of self In other words, God consciousness. Then, then you're really a father. <laughs> 
because you're acting as a representative of the Supreme Father. <laughs> Understand? Yeah, all right, it's a drama, but don't, don't think you're the part you play. <laughs> we'll play it good anyway. <laughs> all right, you want to add something? <laughs> oh, you said it was very good. But part of our responsibility is to be able to, to identify the roles that we have and what the proper way of playing that role is. Yeah, So I said that. Yeah. I'm just repeating what you said. <laughs> so not only in, this, in the material life, but even Sri Rupa Goswami advises that we understand what role we have in spiritual life also, and what level of attainment we have in those roles. So because there is a variety of ways of playing a role, there's not only one way of playing the role, there's uh, unlimited varieties. Yeah. And we really have to find out through Guru Sadhana Shastra and the Paramatma within our Are you heart. talking about the material role or spiritual role? Even spiritual role. Oh, okay. If one has a role of father or guru or whatever, one may be able to play that role to different degrees properly. Right, okay. Yeah. And some are good at it, some are not. <laughs> some know what it is, and some are trying to understand what it is. <laughs> Yes, Mataji. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hvala lepa za zelo uh, inspirativno lekcijo, da veliko razmišl za razmišljati. Uh, danes ste govorili o ločevanju duhovnosti. Danes ste govorili o Hare Krishna, o ločevanju duhovnega, oziroma razumevanju duhovnega sveta in pa materialnega. In um, razmišljam uh, z moje pozicije, kako... You just wait till he finishes and then you can translate, yeah. Ja. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, danes ste, nam, sem poskušala razumeti to uh, ločenost med duhovnim in uh, duhovnim svetom in materialnim svetom. Today I try to understand the difference, difference between material and spiritual world. In um, če gledam zdaj iz mojega položaja, ker živim v templju in ko and if I look from my perspective, uh, because now I live in the temple, in ko je potrebno deliti službice, bodi si v kongregacijskim baktam ali templskim. And when I need to um, schedule the, uh, like jobs, services, different services for congregational devotees or for devotees in temple. Mogoče še bolj uh, uh, kongregacijskim. Maybe even more to congregational members. Kje je tukaj um, moje nerazumevanje, uh, zakaj je tako težko narediti kakšno službico, uh, ko govorimo o suženstvu ali pa da je to službica za Krišno? Kako... Uh, here I don't understand... Um, uh, no, Uh -huh. how, how to explain them that this is a service, that it's not a form of slavery? Yeah, and that service za Krishna, govorimo pa o visoki filozofiji, in, a ne, ampak so stvari zelo preproste. Zakaj, recimo, se tukaj zatakne pri Bhaktak? Because we talk about this high philosophy, but actually the uh, things are very simple. So right. why it gets uh, with devotees catchy with this part? So why do devotees... Zakaj to ne razumejo, da to delajo za Krišno? You just explain that, you, that you now you're, you're doing service for the Lord, that's all. And to serve the Lord is, will make you happy, for, you know, will we'll, uh, connect you with God. It's, um, we live to our existence is spiritual and therefore be by doing this service we're we're actually acting on the 
our real identity as a spirit. So you can speak like that. Very simple, right to the point, nothing philosophically that, you know, you're not this body, you're an illusion, and therefore you're not doing anything, although I'm telling you to do something. <laughs> you don't want to get into all of these. Yeah, simplify it. And when I first came to Krishna Conscious, I remember when I was in New York, my bhakta leader said, you know, you've been serving yourself all your life, now you can serve God. And I thought, wow, now I can actually serve God. I got really excited. <laughs> He made it sound so important that now I'm actually doing the thing that is the best thing I could possibly do. I'm serving that person who is God. Wow. <laughs> it was like, you know, so you can somehow, you know, make tell people that, you know, you can serve the Lord. Hvala. Ali morda ne razumemo, kaj pomeni sploh predaja, da premalo razumemo, kaj pomeni se predati Krišni. Uh, do we maybe not understand what is actually surrender, surrender to Krishna? Don't worry about surrender, just get them engaged in devotional service. <laughs> there are, by, by following your instructions and carrying them out nicely, they're surrendering. The surrender is not something that happens and then you're surrendered. Surrender is moment to moment. <laughs> you can be surrendered one moment and the next minute not. So at that point when they're engaged, they're surrendered. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. All right, we can stop here. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Ki jai.